Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be talking about the Fruity Send and how to use it in your track and why you'd use this as opposed to some other very useful methods as well. So we're going to be looking at that. Let's get right into it. So here's the Fruity Send. This is what it looks like. A send is simply something that takes a signal it receives and sends it to a new destination, hence why it's called a send. You're going to hear all kinds of different sends. This one's called the fruity send because it is in FL Studio, but you might have what's called an auxiliary send if you've ever worked on an actual mixing console. Uh, there are different DAWs will have sends, but generally they're just called sends in DAWs. So a send takes a signal, sends it somewhere else. Why would you want to do this? And why not just set up more channels to handle this problem or this, this setup. Why use the send? So here I've got this choir sound and uh, let's turn off the send for now. And it's these chords right here. These two big chords when the choir comes in, I'm gonna play it from right here. And at the time I was writing this, uh, I was looking for a way to merge things together a bit nicer. And so let me just play this for you. So this is without a send, still sounds pretty good, but I kind of wanted to do some things afterwards. So let's hear it first. So this choir comes in, it sounds really nice, but what I wound up doing was I wound up putting a reverb on a lot of the other things, and it'd be cool to have the choir also go through this reverb. So what I did was I went to the channel that has the choir on it, I put a send on it, just, just uh, look up your fruity send in your plugin picker, or if it's not on that list, you can go to more plugins and it will be in this bigger list. So once you have that loaded up, we need to tell FL Studio where these things are that it can send to. So what I have done here is here's the channel. And in order for it to appear in this send number, you have to have the channel side chained to it. So here I've got my channel and I've sent, you can see down here, a signal to Harmer 2. And the reason is Harmer 2, why this channel, is it's got all the reverby stuff going on and I'd like it to receive all the same processing. See, there's like some pitch effects and things on here. I want it to get all the same processing that this channel is going through. So some of this has been automated off. The two big ones are the Pro R and the Love Filter. I wanted to have these two on there. So what I did was I side chained and the way you can do that is if I were to, well, let's do it to a different channel because I don't want to undo that. So if I were to just click right here, this is the amount of signal that's being sent to this channel. And I might say, why not just use this? We'll get to that in a second. Uh, the way you do this is you just turn it down. That's how FL Studio knows that it's a side chain send. So this is now going to appear as a number here. So if we come in here and we look, that's why a Harmer 2 appears. In fact, if I were to send to this channel right here, which is just called contact, and I go in, you see I've got a contact, another contact channel has appeared. So that's how send the send works. So you choose the channel you want to send to. And let me go ahead and turn off the other Harmer that's going through here and you will hear the choir come through now. And let's just go, let's go ahead and solo this. We will solo this and we will turn on the contact bus. Now you can hear the choir coming through here. Notice there's nothing coming through here now. Now what's really nifty with the send is we can mix it in. We could have some signal come out the send as well. And we can do some cool things with this. So why use this instead of using some other way? Well, first, it's a great thing to bring up when you're not sure if you're going to be doing more processing or mixing later on down the line. So for example, on this, you know, maybe I want to do some additional processing or maybe I want a wave shaper on this and, you know, I'm going to do some really aggressive wave shaping, but I'm not sure, you know, how much I want mixed in. I could throw a send on and then this signal is going to be sent out before it hits the wave shaper. So right now there's nothing going to the wave shaper. So if I play it, 
Nothing, nothing makes it through. But if I go ahead now and I mix in some dry, we'll get some of this wave shaper sound. Like that. <laughs> and so we can do things here. Like, let's say I had something that I wanted both the send and the post to have. Like a, let's just say I had some sort of EQ move that I wanted to do. This EQ move will happen before it hits the send. So the signal is going to come down the channel. It's going to hit the EQ. That EQ'd signal is going to go out the fruity send. And then whatever we mix through will also go to the wave shaper. So you see this is going to go. You can hear it even though nothing's here because it's being sent here. And then we can mix some of this wave shaper signal in. But let's say that we'll tame the high end a bit. And we'll have it be like this low sort of ominous screechy sound. And you can do some cool mixing decisions this way uh, to make things work. Maybe we want the clean send to get sent out first, and then we want to do things here. So you may still say, well, you could just set up a second chain with this. Well, what's nice is you can move the send around in this freely. So you can experiment with where the send exists, which would be a major pain to do on multiple channels. Uh, again, I like to grab the send, especially when I've already set up a chain and I'd like to just insert something. So, or take out a particular piece. And so the send's really useful uh, for that particular job. Now, there is another thing you can use besides the fruity send that I would recommend usually. Um, it can even include the send in it if you want to. And that is the patcher. So patcher can host a bunch of uh, plugs in it and it can use sends to send out to other channels anyways it's a lot more involved in setting it up but once you get used to how to do it you can do it pretty quickly uh, it's just the first few times you may be in for a little bit of learning which is never a bad thing so i would recommend going patcher first but what distinguishes when i choose patcher or send is when i know i'm going to be doing some more complicated you know, effect chains, I'll grab a patcher and put it in. But when I've already got chains set up, like here, I've already got stuff already lined up and I've already got a channel and I don't want to do the partial send because what if I, what if I were to just send it like this and not use this send? So then I could just control the dry choir with this and the send choir with this. You could do it this way. The reason I don't recommend doing it this way is because now you have to remember that this is a thing which I don't think if you come to the channel and you see this, this is going to be a lot more obvious. And uh, this, when this is happening, this fader right here is responsible for the stuff coming down it in this choir sound. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. This fader is sort of pulling double duty. And so I like to put a send in because to me, it's just a little bit more straightforward. When I look at the chain, I'm saying, okay, this is what's going on. Um, and then you also, you can see down here, something's going on. So it's not like you don't get an indication. Another great thing sends are used for is, uh, if, let's say that you've got a reverb. Reverbs are more processor intensive. And you want to save those cycles for some other processing you'd like to use it on. Well, you can instantiate one reverb and then set up sends to go to that. So you can see I actually have a verb send. So if I wanted this particular verb on it, I could. All I need to do is place it in and then just mix in the amount I want. So this is the, the more traditional way of viewing sends. They're kind of like special effect buses that just return the signal that you sent process. So these would have 100% reverb dry. So this would not have any dry mixed in. It would be 100% wet and the dry signal would be controlled by the fader. So it's a really, really common way. It's a convenient way of thinking of things. And it's a plugin that while I don't grab it a whole lot, when I do grab it, I'm always reminded of how nifty it can be. Uh, it can really solve some problems if you want to take out a particular section without getting too involved in rerouting and copying all the stuff over again. So anyways, that is Sense. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.